Today we're going to look at eight tricks that you need to know for sewing silk fabric. The fabric that I'm using in this video is 100% silk that I was given to use from Minerva. I will link it below in the comments. So the first thing we need to discuss is pre-treating your silk fabric and do you need to do it? And this all depends on how you want to use it. For me, I will only be dry cleaning my finished dress, therefore I do not need to pre-treat it. But if you wanted to wash it, many silks can be laundered. You can cut a small square and try it out in your machine and hang dry. When it is damp, take it to your iron and on a dry silk setting, press it. The second tip is all about how to cut out your pattern. You never want to cut anything for silk on the fold. Therefore, you need to make a flat pattern piece for any of your pattern pieces that require being cut on the fold. Here, I took a piece of medical exam paper, which I purchased on Amazon, and I taped it to the pattern. After taping it down the front and the back of the pattern piece, you simply fold it over so that you have the mirror image and trace it onto the medical exam paper. Once you're done tracing out your pattern, you then cut the tissue paper, and once you open it up, you now have a full flat pattern piece to use when cutting out your pattern. Make sure you transfer any notches as needed. When you go to cut out the back of your pattern, simply cut one of your back pieces and then flip it over and cut the mirror image. One of the most difficult parts of working with silk fabrics is that they tend to shift and move when you're cutting and sewing them. So this trick is essential to get you quality finished silk project. You need to have tissue paper or this medical exam paper to use for this step. You'll want to roll out your medical exam paper so that it's long enough for your pattern piece. Oftentimes you'll need more than one piece in order to be large enough. I picked up this medical exam table paper that is crepe back and it works really well. I picked it up from Amazon in bulk and I will link it below. This is perfect for this use of sewing tissue and also for tracing patterns. Next, you wanna tape your pieces together so that you can sandwich your fabric in between prior to cutting out any of your pattern pieces. Repeat this process for a second piece. Next, it's time to cut our fabric. You'll wanna begin by laying down one set of tissue paper and then place your fabric on top. But before you cut out anything further, you'll need to make sure that your fabric has been straightened. Let's talk about how you can straighten this up in case wherever you purchase from did not already do this. To do so, you'll wanna lay your fabric out on your table and carefully straighten out the fabric. Line up your selvage edge with your straight ruler, and then on the other edge, put a one and a half inch snip, find a single thread, and then pull it to show you where to trim your fabric to even it out. Fortunately for me, Minerva already did this when cutting my fabric, so it was not necessary. For my project, I'm using a pattern hack, so I am altering the pattern that you see here. But let's discuss grain line because that is important. You want to take your ruler and measure from the grain line to the selvage edge all the way up and down your pattern piece to make sure they're at the exact same distance. When your grain line is perfectly straight, you'll go ahead and add your pattern piece to the fabric. For me, I am adding 10 inches to the length of this top pattern. Using silk glass head pins, pin your pattern piece to your fabric only within the seam allowance. For the bottom portion of my hack to work, I separated the hemline piece and used 10 inches on each side of the dress, slightly flaring out the sides so that it would create the mini dress look that I was after. Now comes the important part. Lay that second piece of tissue paper that you prepped on top of the pattern piece and pin it together again just at the seam allowance. Next, take your rotary cutters or your scissors and go ahead and cut out your pattern, making sure that you're careful not to move any of your pattern pieces or shift. You can also use sharp scissors such as these gingers. Just know that silk will dull things so you will probably need to sharpen your scissors or change your rotary blade when you've finished. 
This next step is a little more difficult. You want to carefully unpin and remove only the pattern piece from in between the layers of tissue. Then repin all of the tissue back to the fabric staying within the seam allowances. Finish prepping all of your pattern pieces the same way. Now that you've cut them all out, it's time to discuss thread. What type of thread should you use when sewing silk? Well, one example would be what I used, which is 100% silk that I picked up from my local Joanne store from Guterman. You can also use machine rayon embroidery thread if you are unable to find silk thread in your color. I will link this silk thread below in the comments as well. Now that you have your thread, let's talk about what needle to use. I prefer to use a Microtex needle. It is small and sharp and perfect for silk fabric. Now, why did we go through all that trouble to cut everything out with these layers of tissue? Well, it is your essential step to stabilizing your fabric while you're sewing and cutting. Silk will want to move and shift all around and it will cause lots of problems if you don't take this extra precaution. Once you've done this, you'll wanna leave your silk attached to this tissue paper as long as possible during construction. So line up your back pieces and pin them together. You'll need to remove the pins that you put in earlier to sandwich your fabric and move them remaining in the seam allowance before you stitch them together. Here you can see I am leaving the pins in as long as possible and sandwiching the fabric. I removed one side of the tissue paper for this shoulder seam and it worked okay, but preferably you'll wanna leave in all the layers of tissue if possible. So now you're ready to sew, let's talk stitches. When it comes to sewing, you have a couple of different options. You can use a straight stitch here and just leave it on a lower length like 2.0, but I like to use a slight zigzag stitch. And the reason for this is it allows the fabric to move a little bit and prevent all those puckers. So you wanna turn down your zigzag to a very low width of 0.5 and keep it at a three length, or if your machine has a 2.5 length option, you can do that as well. By doing this, you allow that fabric to keep the movement slightly and not have any of those unsightly puckers and pulls. So now that you've kept your tissues together on your fabric, you're gonna move it to your machine and it's time to sew your back pieces together. Here, you just sew right through the crepe paper as usual. After sewing your seam, remove the tissue paper gently from just that seam allowance. This takes a little bit of time, but just go slowly and carefully remove the paper. After finally getting all that paper off, it's time to talk about what to do with those seams. For me, I found the easiest thing to use was a pinking rotary cutter like I have here from Ulfa, and I'll link this one below as well. Simply use that rotary cutter to pink all of those seam allowances and then press them open. So now it's time to hem your project. For me, I'm choosing to use what's called a baby hem. And the reason I'm choosing a baby hem is because of my fabric weight. It is very delicate and slightly sheer, and I want something that will allow it to hang nicely when being worn. The first step in a baby hem is to put in a line of stay stitching where your hem will be. You want this to be slightly shorter than your final hem allowance. So add your line of stay stitching at one eighth of an inch above where your hem will lie. Then taking your fingers, you'll wanna press it up and have that line of stitching just slightly below that fold line. Next, take it back to your machine and putting a little bit of tension on it, you'll want to put a line of stitching right next to that row of stay stitching you can see here why a practice stitch is needed. I needed to adjust my tensions before I put in my final project. But if this were to be your final project and you were happy at this stage, you would now take your scissors, preferably applique or duckbill scissors if you have them, and cut this extra fabric off as close as you can to that line of stitching. Once your fabric is trimmed, you're gonna take it back to your machine and just fold up slightly, kind of rolling that hem up 
right on those two lines of stitching that you just created. It'll be about a 1 8th of an inch hem and what you'll want to do is go ahead and take your straight stitch and try to stitch close to that turned up edge. I practiced a little bit and found that when I stitched closer to the folded edge, my fabric would tend to roll out. So instead, I moved my needle slightly back towards the left and I'm trying to stitch either right in the center or towards that top edge of my fabric neatly all the way around. To help me get a neat seam that is not going to, or excuse me, a neat hem that is not going to pucker, you need to put a little bit of tension on your fabric. While you don't want to pull the fabric, you do want to keep tension on it so that it is not pulling up and puckering as you go. Take your time, do this slowly. It is a delicate finish and you want this line to be as straight and neat as possible. I think you will be happier if you take your time and go slow instead of trying to rush that hem. Here you can see in the final project, you can see two rows of stitching from the wrong side and on the top side that the um, people will be able to see, you'll just have this one beautiful line of stitching. And now you can sew all your silk projects with confidence and get a beautiful result. Mm -hmm.